Welcome to the next episode of Detents with D. I am your host, I am Dietmar Ostermann, and I am the regular guy from Long Island. Today in this episode, we want to cover American red wine, an introduction to American red wine. So if you are an advanced wine connoisseur, switch over to one of my other many videos that cover these wines in detail. But if you are somewhat new to wine drinking and have the desire to understand more about the most popular American red wines, then this is your show. Okay, I have here today a Pinot Noir from California, a Merlot from uh, Napa Valley, California, a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon from California, and last but not least, a Napa Valley Zinfandel. So those are the four wines and the four grapes we will check out in the next few minutes. The much softer afternoon wine, the Pinot Noir, the little bit heavier but still very light and very little tannins, the Merlot, and then the strong tannins, bold wine, the Cabernet, and the even bolder wine, the Zinfandel, the special grape from America, particularly from California. So, let's start from your right, my left, with the Pinot Noir. So this happens to be a favorite of mine. This Pinot Noir is called the Dairyman Vineyard or Dairyman. Let's open this baby up. Okay, the Belle Gloss, Russian River Valley, north of Napa and Sonoma. So this is considered to be in the Pinot Noir world a cold weather Pinot Noir wine. The cold weather Pinot Noir wines are known for chocolate, cherry, orange peel and those type of flavors whereas the warmer weather ones further down south in St. Lucia Highlands for instance are more intense they have uh, blackberry and coffee flavors. So a Pinot Noir is a lighter red wine. It has typically pretty high acidity for a red wine. And this particular Pinot Noir has a medium body, low on tannins. So if uh, you don't like tannins in your wine, Pinot Noir may be the choice. Because it's a lighter wine, because it's low on tannins, I consider it also to be a perfect afternoon red wine party wine. Uh, the food pairing that typically a Pinot Noir is so world famous for is a duck. That's the number one wine you would drink with a duck. And of course, uh, heading towards the holidays here, Pinot Noir is also great with turkey. You know, it's a great Thanksgiving wine and uh, you can have uh, a Pinot Noir with uh, a strong tuna steak or with some lobsters or some seafood pairing is possible as well. Let's give this one a sniffy sniff. Beautiful cherry aromas in the background. This is um, a red cherry. So let's give it a whirl. The uh, third step of my wine tasting. First one is to look at the wine. Look at the beautiful color. This one is not see-through, pretty dark color for a, for a um, Pinot Noir. Has some good lines, so high on the alcohol content. And now comes the third step, putting it on the palate and see how the palate takes over some of the fruits and some of the nuances of the taste in that wine. Cherry, 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 cherry all over the mouth with a little bit of a bite. This is a young Pinot Noir 2018, very drinkable. You don't have to sell out a Pinot Noir long, you can drink it right away. But yes, they last also a couple of years, so this Pinot Noir easily can be drunken after five plus years. 
So very, very uh, balanced on the palette. The finish is surprisingly shorter. I would say at best short to medium finish. Nice fruity wine. This particular Pinot Noir happens to have 14.5% alcohol, so it's a little bit heavier. Normally Pinot Noirs are a little bit lighter. I like it a lot. And this, by the way, is one of my most um, uh, favorite uh, Pinot Noir glasses. Big, big globe. This is from uh, Nachtmann, one of the uh, European crystal specialists. Okay, let's pour this out. And let's move from the Pinot into the uh, Merlot. This one happens to be an all-time favorite of mine, the Dacron Merlot. Dacron Merlot is considered to be the leader in California in making Merlot wines. They were the first, they are the best. This particular Dacron is a 2014, so a little bit older. I'm taking a little bit of this wine to clean out the glass so I don't taste the previous wine in here. Let's do the Dacron. 2014, whereas the Pinot Noir was 2018. Okay, what do we see color-wise? Very similar garnet red color, not see-through, solid color. Wine looks good, I'm shaking it around, some good, beautiful lines. I'm thinking 14, 14.5% alcohol, it's not mentioned on the bottle. Good looking bottle, good looking wine. Let's give it it. Sniffy sniff. Elegant, laid back, fruity aromas. This one I would say cherry, but more on the black cherry side. I also smell some plum. Okay. I like that aroma a lot, just like I like the aroma a lot in this Pinot Noir. So keep in mind, Merlot is used either in blending processes, so some of the most famous French Bordeaux are blended with Merlot, or a wine on its own. As a wine on its own, it's lighter. It's a sister wine to the Cabernet Sauvignon, so the taste profile is similar. It does have uh, less acidity as a Pinot Noir, but it is a um, medium to full body wine and um, lower in tannins than a Cabernet over here. The Pinot Noir, almost no tannins. You heard me not speak about this at all. This one, we will expect some tannins, but much less than in a Cabernet. So let's give it a whirl. This is clearly black cherry fruit. Maybe a little bit um, of um, uh, raspberry and blackberry in there, uh, but it's vibrant in the fruit. Really fills out the mouth entirely. Um, I had um, the Dacron Merlot recently, in my Merlot deep dive tasting, and I won the tasting. This is just an excellent expression of a mellow wine. It does have a little bit more tannins. Clearly, I feel the tannins in the mouth. The tannins is what crunkles your tongue, contracts the tongue a little bit, but it makes the wine last and age a little bit longer. So these are good tannins. The finish of this wine is a little flat, disappointing. I was also not entirely happy with the finish of the Pinot Noir. That's the last, the fourth step of my wine tasting. Like looking at the wine in the beginning is step number one. Then uh, smelling the aromas, step number two. Putting it on the palate and really experiencing the aromas uh, and, 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 and all the different flavors in your mouth is step three. And the fourth step in my wine tasting is the finish, how it goes down your throat, how the alcohol maybe shows uh, back in your throat and how long the finish is. Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it biting? Is it pleasant? So that's the fourth step of my wine tasting. I'm switching over to another glass. This is much more a Cabernet glass. 
This also happens to be European crystal. This is from Riedel, the Austrian crystal maker. Let's use that. The Cabernet is a Black Stallion 2015 from Napa Valley. Let's give this one a little bit of a pour into the new glass. So what do we see? Darker, much darker than the other two. I mean, still in the same garnet red color tone profile, but dark. Does have some good lines. Again, this is around the 14% alcohol framework. Good looking wine in the glass. So Cabernet is a full body wine, whereas um, the Pinot Noir, more medium body, the uh, Merlot, more medium body. P uh, the Cabernet has less acidity, whereas probably the Pinot Noir has the most acidity and the Dacon is somewhere in the middle. But then the Cabernet does have a lot more tannins. The Dacon or the Merlot in general has medium tannins and the Pinot Noir very, very little tannins. So let's give it a sniffy sniff. Some graphite, which is also very typical for Cabernet wines. Let's give it a whirl. A lot more tannin bite to it. That means this 2015 really is a wine that can drink now in 2020, but it can also drink in 2025, at which point in time I don't think I would recommend to drink the Pinot Noir or the Merlot. So it has a much longer lasting profile created by the tannins. Very good wine. I would be very hard pressed um, to force rank these because they're all very, very good tasting wines. But obviously they are, you know, different wines. And so they have different profiles and it's very interesting to taste them next to each other. So this is a wine from a food pairing standpoint. You know, we, we said duck is the number one food for the Pinot Noir. Probably the Merlot because of the low tannins is much more like spicy foods. Uh, Mexican food, a taco, or you can eat it with uh, a spicy lamb. And, you know, for the Cabernet, the top-notch food pairing there is a typical steak. That is the number one steak wine, steak with mushrooms, ideally. Um, great wine. Cabernet is a massively planted grape in California. But I just looked up the statistics, and obviously in France, the wine home country for many of these grapes, uh, they do... Uh, uh, grow more Cabernet grape and Chile is now second so the US particularly California actually is only third there's also a fair amount of uh, Cabernet grape grown in Washington State uh, California has 80,000 acres but it's only third in the world whereas Merlot in California we have about 45,000 acres Pinot Noir about 40,000 acres so a lot more Pinot Noir number one country, also France. Uh, Merlot grape number one country, also France. Same is true for the uh, Cabernet growing grape. Okay, let's pour this out. And let's put the last contestant to the test, the Zinfandel. Pouring out the glass. Now this Zinfandel is from this new fashionable Boutique Winery, the Prisoner Wine Company. Prisoner used to be part of Orrin Swift and then Orrin Swift sold the Prisoner Vineyard that makes the actual Prisoner wine, but also the Saldo Zinfandel. Now, Zinfandel alcohol heavy. This particular wine, 15.5% alcohol. Let's put some in the glass. So Zinfandel is wine I do not drink very often. It's not typically a wine I like a lot. My number one go-to wine is always a Cabernet. I do like the Merlots and I very rarely but sometimes drink Pinot Noirs, particularly around Thanksgiving. Zinfandel I typically never drink but I wanted to bring it out for this tasting because the number one country in the world 
making Zinfandel wine is America. It's 70% of worldwide production grown in America, mostly in California, but um, it's 50,000 acres, very significant. So this one has medium acidity, full body wine. So the Cabernet is a full body wine too. The Pinot Noir medium body, the Merlot medium body, full body wine, lots of alcohol, much sweeter, medium on the tannins. Typical fruit would be a raspberry or blackberry with a little bit of licorice and potentially strawberry. But let's check out this particular wine. Color dark as expected, ruby red. Lots of big fat lines in the glass indicating high sugar content, high alcohol. Okay, sniffy sniff. Blackberry for sure, some licorice, maybe mixed in some raspberry. Okay, let's give it a whirl. This is a um, 2018. It appears to me it will benefit from being another year or two cellared and staying in the bottle. It has quite a bit, but good tannins uh, in the mouth. I feel um, a lot of dark berries, like blackberries. Um, the finish is long, but a little strange. Not um, my cup of a finish either. So it's an interesting profile. It's a, it's a big wine. They uh, refer to a Zinfandel as the ultimate barbecue wine. So you would maybe try a Zinfandel with a burger on the barbecue. You can do it with pizza. Uh, this strong of a wine could be paired well with a, with a, with a pork roast. So those are the flavor profiles. In my personal rating here, and again, I am very biased towards Cabernet. I did in this particular tasting profile like the Merlot better. The Dacon Merlot was excellent. I'm willing to give it a 4.7 on Vivino on my own scale. I say the Black Stallion, enormous price value, because actually the bottle is only $24. I give this a 4.4, I was very pleased with that. The Dairyman from uh, Belle Gloss, I give a 4.2, it's a great wine. And the Saldo, I give it 3.8 in my own rating. Now here's what Vivino says, the average rating from Vivino users, I gave this a 3.8, Vivino 4.2 on average, and this is a $30 Zinfandel. The Black Stallion, as I said, $24, average Vivino rating 4.1. I gave this a 4.4. The Duckhorn uh, $50 bottle, average Vivino rating 4.3. I gave it a 4.7. And the Bell Gloss Dairyman is a $47 Pinot Noir. The best money can buy, really, I would say. Uh, and um, the Bell Gloss is by Vivino Raiders rated 4.4. I rated 4.2. That's my overview of the top four grapes and wines in American red wine. If you like this show, please press the like button right here, thumbs up, and subscribe it. I see you otherwise next Sunday.